Uh, we'll proceed uh, now with the FACO dynamics. This is one of the really uh, a bit, you know, I wouldn't say difficult, but you know, as, as a physician, we don't like, you know, to, because this is more of what we call it mechanics and there are things, you know, uh, we, 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 we don't want to deal with because in the machine, you know, there are many things. Uh, we, we are not an engineer, so they know it better than us. So uh, as you all know that, uh, you know, fake emulsification started by this man, who is, uh, his name is Kilman in 1967. So it's almost, you know, around 50 years ago. And uh, he started with, with the, you know, uh, he noticed, you know, uh, while doing, you know, uh, uh, dental filling, you know, they, they, the probe that is used to do the uh, filling, uh, it used the vibration. And then from there, he started to think about, you know, the fake emulsification. You need to understand few things, you know. We, as I said, you know, I don't want you to go to the detail of the machine, but it's very important, you know, when you have a machine, because every machine has its own parameters and how to 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 do it and how to uh, uh, you know have a good successful outcome when you do the the surgery. So, but there are certain things which is fixed for every machine. For example, we have the ultrasound, and this is what we are doing. It's, it's an ultrasound. So it's frequency above the range of aud aud audibility. So when we say ultrasound, something that we cannot hear it. So and uh, anything above uh, uh, 20,000 vibration per second, we call it an ultrasound. And uh, there are no sound uh, wave associated with the, with the ultrasound. The physical principles, uh, understanding the physics and principles of FACO machine makes it your surgical performance safe and effective. And it's the surgeon's responsibility. It's your responsibility. Don't give it to someone else. Don't say it's the nurse who should know the, the machine. Don't say that the technician who, who should know better than you in the machine. Yes, they can help you. If you have a lot of cases, they can help you. But at least if there is anything happened during the surgery, you should know what is going on, when to stop, when to you know, do things, because sometimes for example, let us assume that your technician is not available that day. So nothing, you know, uh, everything should not stop. So why we should have an, an, an excellent or, or good fecal emulsification? Because we don't want to end with, with the corneal edema and we don't want to have a lot of complication. We don't want to damage the eye because you, you are using an energy. So you want to use this energy properly. So you don't want to harm the eye while doing your, your, your case. So what happens, you know, if you have ineffective emulsification, if you are using an excessive power or unnecessary excessive power, you will prolong your FICO time. And this is an energy and more power can give you more heat generation and this can damage the tissue. The ultrasound, we can see it in the, in the probe, the ultrasound probe. And uh, the probe can do two things. It can do the, you know, uh, emulsification with the ultrasound energy and it gives you the irrigation and aspiration to maintain the anterior chamber uh, while doing the case. What do we mean by fake emulsification? It is a breakup of cataract with an oscillating titanium to emulsify, uh, emuls emulsate then aspirate through small incision. This is briefly what do we mean by fake emulsification. So what, how do we generate power while doing the emulsification. We, we generate the power by an, an interaction between stroke and frequency. And this is, we, we see it in the FACO tip of the machine. So we have two things. We have the frequency, which is the speed of the needle movement. And uh, usually the range is from uh, 35,000 cycle per second to 45,000 cycle per second. And this is most of the machine they have fixed. Okay, so this is fixed. You cannot change it. So what you can change, you can play with the stroke length and the length of the needle movement. And the movement usually from two, uh, two to six mil, uh, mil, uh, sorry, millimeter uh, movement. The longer, so the longer the, 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 the needle, I mean, while doing the emulsification, the, the stronger or the, the more effect you can, you can get. As I said, the frequency is, 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 is stable. It's not changing. But we can change the stroke length according to the energy that you need. So this is, the, this is what we mean by the stroke. So this is the movement of the FACO needle, so forward and backward. So you can make it, you know, the, the, the range either two millimeter or you can make it six millimeter. 
now we have also something in, in the frequency. As I said, the frequency is fixed, but we have the amplitude. And this is we can make it to 100, and we can make it uh, even less. And uh, uh, you know, most of the FACO machine, they have like 47,000 uh, uh, time per second uh, while os oscillating the needle. The, how do we generate the power? The power is very important to emulsify the nucleus. So how do we generate it? We have uh, what we call it the jackhammer effect and the capitation energy while doing the FACO emulsification. The jackhammer effect, it needs rapid uh, acceleration of the FACO tip, and it needs close mechanical contact between the tip of the FACO and the, the, the nucleus. and. Uh, and also we have something also uh, that we, we, we emulsify the, the nucleus with, we call it cavitation. And it, this is a creation of zones of high and low pressure, and the low pressure created with the backward movement of the tip of the, of the, of the needle. So while it moves backward, it creates a negative pressure, and the, the negative pressure will create what we call it micro bubbles, and this can create shock waves which damage solid surfaces of the FACO tip. So these micro bubbles can cause, you know, the, 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 the damage or the, you know, uh, uh, emulsification of the, of the lens. And this is very, very, you, because most of the time, you know, we don't want to go to the cavitation because cavitation, we, we release a lot of, of uh, energy while doing this. I hope this is working, but I'm not sure. I don't think it's working, okay. This is will show you the, the, the jackhammering effect. So nowadays, uh, it's proven that cutting effect with jackhammering is as effective as cavitation, but with low energy. So we prefer to have the jackhammering because it, it has less energy compared to the, what we call it cavitation. So we, we don't want to have cavitation unless the, the nucleus is so hard, so we can move to the cavitation. When you go high with the FACO power more than 50%, then we will start having the cavitation. And as I said, cavitation will, will release a lot of uh, energy, so this might cause some damage. So nowadays we are moving to what we call it, you know, rotatory movement. So it will have a jackhammering, so it will have less cavitation, but it will have more power effect. And the rotatory movement in, in some of the FACO machine, and for example, Al Alcon, they call it Ozel, and it has no cavitation, therefore it's less energy production. Uh, modification of FACO power, this is excessive FACO power, uh, as probably mentioned, it can cause wound damage, it can cause endothelial trauma, and also iris damage if you are not careful. So it's very important to, to, to use the proper uh, power uh, uh, while, you know, uh, I mean, uh, if, if you want to hit a mosquito, you don't need to use a power, I mean, a rocket. So, uh, the, the, the efficient power that you need or the maximum efficient power that you need, you need to, to use it. For example, if you have a soft nucleus, so you don't need to go to the maximum powers of the machine. You, you will have a lot of energy, a lot of uh, trauma uh, without necessary. Uh, this is my, I might skip this one because of the time. Okay, I will. I will mention a few things about fluidics, which is the balance between inflow and outflow. The infusion will be adjusted by the bottle height according to the flow rate. So this is very important to, to maintain the anterior chamber. And uh, uh, we have nowadays in, in some of the machines like Centurion from Alcon, we have active bump, which can, they have sensor at the tip of the FACO, and this is can adjust the, the, the inflow to the anterior chamber. And, but most of the machines, they use the passive or the gravity to, to, uh, to maintain the anterior chamber. And also the outflow is important. Uh, probably it will be mentioned later. Uh, there will be some complication if you do not adjust your wound. And uh, if you have large wound, you will have an excessive leakage. If you have a small wound, you will have problem with the small wound, like uh, wound burn, like uh, uh, shallowing of the anterior chamber. Uh, aspiration is also important. Uh, we need to know to because you will have it in the machine, you know, aspiration and you'll have the vacuum and you need to understand the difference between the two terms. The vacuum is a fluidic force, it's a force, okay? 
once phaco tip is occluded and it is measured in millimeter of mercury. So when the tip is, is, is occluded, then the, the, the force will be, uh, or the, uh, the vacuum will be high, and this is uh, what we call it uh, the vacuum. And uh, we have two types of vac vacuum bumps. We have uh, Prestaltic, we have Venturi. Most of the FACO machine, they will have, uh, uh, so unfortunately, it's not working. How to go back to this? Uh, thank you. I wanted to show you the difference between Venturi and Peristaltic uh, bumps. And uh, this is also the rise time. Also, you can see it in some of the machine. And uh, measurement of the how fast vacuum builds up. And this is will be higher with Venturi compared to the Peristaltic. The surge, uh, uh, unfortunately, we don't have um, the video is not working here. And uh, uh, they have certain mechanism to reduce the surge because the surge is the sudden collapse of the anterior chamber. And probably finally, uh, we have the irrigation and aspiration, and this is uh, mostly uh, very clear and easy part of the procedure. The FACO bidel, you should understand how does it work and the steps of each. And this is also is adjustable according to the, to, to the machine. So in conclusion, FACO emulsification is almost daily procedure for most thalamic surgeon. Therefore, it is mandatory for any cataract surgeon to understand the machine and its parameters to have an effective and safe procedure. Thank you.